Hi, this weekend I went to the cinema and watched Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, the seventh in the apparently close to conclusion at a series of movies based on Bruce Geller's TV show from the 1960s. Tom Cruise is back as Ethan Hunt again, leading the Impossible Missions Force and planning to save the world. This time, the antagonist is an artificial intelligence named the Entity, which has somehow found its way out of a uh, uh, defense uh, system, is infecting the world, and the various intelligence agencies across the planet are trying to find a way to get it under control. Uh, the way of this, apparently, is to get hold of a special kind of key which will be able to unlock some way of uh, getting the entity under control and the person who controls the entity can potentially control the world. So uh, Hunt and his team travel across various locations, getting together the pieces of the key and trying to find out uh, what the uh, what it will open and deal with Gabriel, who is acting as the entity's herald um, and is also a figure from Ethan's past. It's... Uh, the biggest Mission Impossible so far, uh, a, a two-movie pick, a two-movie story, but it also runs two and three-quarter hours on its own. Um, it's the most expensive, I think, and it's the biggest in scale because the villain is a world-ending AI. Um, but it's also possibly the best. Um, Mission Impossible Fallout was the first film I reviewed on this channel. Um, and I found it something of a disappointment uh, after all the hype. I don't think it was as good as um, the previous film, Rogue Nation. And I think that the benchmark of the series remains the first film uh, from 1996, which is much more of a Hitchcockian thriller and suspense sequences rather than just stunts. Um, Dead Reckoning Part 1, I think, gets the balance right. There are some really well-crafted suspense sequences. There's a low-key chase around... Uh, an Abu Dhabi airport, but there's also uh, a fantastically choreographed car chase around Rome. Um, we have various new characters coming in, um, a uh, opportunistic thief named Grace, played by Haley Atwell. We have characters returning from previous films. We even have Henry Cherney uh, playing Eugene Kittredge, um, the uh, supervisor of the IMF from the first film, who hasn't been seen in the series since then. Um, the scale of the picture is uh, extraordinary, um, and I just found it extremely enjoyable. Um, it absolutely zips through its nearly three-hour running time. Um, it does have the potential problem that, as, the as openly promoted as being the first half of a two-part story, it could simply end on a cliffhanger and not feel like a complete work, but it does feel like a complete film in its own right then leading into a further instalment um, at the end. Um, but um, I found it to be very enjoyable, very well made. Uh, Christopher McQuarrie, again, co-writing and directing, as he has the previous two films. Um, this is clearly his, uh, his great work. Um, worth remembering, of course, that the year the first film came out, he won the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay for The Usual Suspects. Um, but it's all set up for a very exciting Dead Reckoning Part 2. I'm trying to avoid going into spoilers because I really don't see the point. I mean, the stunt sequences like the jumping off a cliff on a motorbike or uh, blowing up a, a railway bridge, these are all well known and these have been heavily promoted. People don't go and see Mission Impossible films for the story. But the story is a solid one. Um, we have um, elements looking into Ethan's origins as a member of the IMF, um, th the reason why. And th there's also a sense of humour about the whole thing. I, I, I was rather disappointed by how serious and po-faced uh, Fallout was, but Dead Reckoning Part 1 has more of a sense of humour. It does acknowledge how ridiculous a name the Impossible Missions Force is and how they are constantly going rogue. Um, and constantly dealing with world-ending threats. So I like that it it had that sense of lightness to it, even though it's dealing with such a huge subject. Um, it's one of the best action pictures I've seen in many years, uh, potentially the best film in the series to date. I thought it was great fun, well-made, very enjoyable, and I'd recommend it very highly.